Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. Rumor has it that the Love & Hip Hop Hollywood stars April Jones and Lil Fizz are actually still together in spite of the breakup rumors. Now last week it was speculated that April and Fizz might have taken a break from each other when they unfollowed each other on social media and April did address the breakup rumors on Fox Soul. Are you guys, did you guys break up? Cause that's like the reports now. Um, you know, Drew is a great man and his focus is on Cam, my focus is on my children and we are where we are. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to leave it there. Now, even though April didn't confirm the breakup, her answer did lead people to believe that their relationship was over. However, Fizz's baby mama, Monice, recently came out and said that they're actually still together. And the reason why they led the public to believe they broke up is because of Omarion. Now, most of us know that Omarion was blindsided when his baby mama, April, decided to date his former friend and bandmate, Fizz. And even though Omarion seems like he doesn't care about Fizz and April's relationship, he's not as unbothered as he appears. After Omarion found out that Fizz was messing around with his baby mama, he took him off the Millennium Tour, and now he's ordering Fizz to stay away from his kids, allegedly. Fizz's baby mama Monice recently spilled all of the tea to Bawa Alert. She said this about Fizz and April's relationship. They're still very much together, still living together, and she has not lost custody. The picture she's been posting of her and her daughter with the stripper pole in the background are in Drew's house, which is Lil Fizz. The video of her sleeping on the floor Christmas day and toasting with her friends was at Drew's house as well. Her kids were with their dad this holiday, just like our son was with me because they took the kids out of state to her mom's house for Christmas last year. Monice also spilled some interesting tea about April and Omarion's current custody battle. She's in and out of court with Omari, and one of his stipulations is that Drew can't be around his kids. They unfollowed each other to get the public off of their tails, but they're still going strong. Cam, which is Fizz and Monice's son, FaceTimed him for bed two Mondays ago, and she was in the background. He made sure to put her in the frame. Now, I'm sure some of y'all are wondering why is Monice talking about April and Fizz yet again? I myself was wondering the same thing. Well, apparently, Fizz pissed off Monice, and this is why she's putting him and April on blast. She was really upset that Fizz invited her estranged biological father to her son Cameron's birthday because, according to Monice, her father is sociopathic and abusive. So she was really bothered at the fact that Fizz and April allowed him to go to her son's birthday party. And that's why Monice is putting them on blast. Now, I personally don't agree with her doing this, but I'm not mad at it because honestly, this is some interesting tea right here. The most interesting part about all of this is the fact that Omarion doesn't want Fizz around his kids. I don't know if Fizz is a threat to his kids or not. It seems like his kids are comfortable around him. So I don't know if he's doing this because he's concerned about the safety of his children or if it's because he's being petty. And I have a strong feeling that Omarion might be being petty in this situation. Now, I could be wrong. Omarion probably has some legitimate concerns, but... I wouldn't be surprised if Omarion was doing this to be petty. And I can't say I blame him because I don't. I think a lot of people in his shoes would do the exact same thing. Nobody really wants their kids around the person who betrayed them, nor would they want that person having any influence on their children's lives. So I do understand the pettiness behind it, but I feel like Omarion was doing this to shake up some things in Fizz and April's relationship because April and Fizz do live together and their kids sometimes live with them as well. So Omarion probably intentionally ordered that his kids stay away from Fizz in his custody battle with April because he knows that it will make things a little harder on April and Fizz's relationship. Now, if April were to violate the order and allow her kids to be around Fizz, she would be in trouble. So the custody of her kids is at stake right now, which is why she's probably trying to distance herself from Fizz. But Monice blew their cover and said that they're still together. So I don't know what will come of this, but this is a mess. This right here, 
is a mess. <laughs> Now, I want to move on and touch on this topic briefly. Reports are saying that Rihanna just broke up with her billionaire boyfriend, Hassan Jamil, after dating for almost three years. Now, this report is coming from US Weekly, and I would take it with a grain of salt because I'm not going to say they broke up or not without further confirmation, but this is just a rumor. However, this rumor might be true because there is a possibility that Rihanna and Hassan have gone their separate ways. We haven't seen them together for months now. In fact, I've seen Rihanna spend more time with ASAP Rocky than Hassan in the last few months. So I am kind of wondering what's been going on between them. If it is true that they broke up, I do think it will be bittersweet for Rihanna because she seemed like she really liked him. However, in the end, it's probably for the best because they are different people and I don't really know how Rihanna would be able to adjust to life being married into a very traditional Muslim family. I think it would have been hard for her to adjust and she probably would have gone down the same route as Janet. So maybe it's a good thing that they broke up, but you never know, they're probably still together. Anyway, let me move on to the next topic and talk about NeNe Leakes trying to spit on Kenya more. Now, if you don't know, a new trailer dropped for the second half of the season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, and there is a clip of Nene and Kenya almost getting into another fight, and Nene looked like she was going to spit on Kenya. My question is, will we see you and Nene in a better place this year? The answer about Nene is absolutely not. Uh, I think she's pretty much dead to me. When All someone right. tries to spit on you, I think they're not ever going to be friends. Now, I know you guys remember when the show was getting ready to start, Kenya's saying that I spit on her. And she said it on Wendy Williams' show that I spit on her. Did so. she spit in your face? She tried to act like she was going to spit on me, and you will see that on the show. Do I ever spit on Kenya? No. Why she went and told those lies is, again, to be malicious. Well, Kenya clearly didn't lie because Nene did actually try to spit on her, but she didn't do it. However, Nene said she wished she did. She said on Twitter, she need to be spit on with all the horrible things she has said and done. From constantly starting stuff with me all season, lying on me, saying I'm on drugs and bipolar, plus that recent tweet she posted, so enjoy the moment. I did the act, but I didn't spit. I wish I had, though. No regrets. Honestly, I don't know where to start when it comes to Nene and Kenya because these two have been going at it for years now. And honestly, it just boils down to ego. Before Kenya came on Real Housewives of Atlanta, Nene was kind of the queen of the show. But as soon as Kenya came on, she did kind of take some of Nene's shine a little bit. And not only that, Kenya took Nene's best friend, Cynthia. <laughs> so I think that's really the root of their tension, but Nene and Kenya have always been very catty towards each other. It's always been a tit for tat kind of thing between the two of them. And I really don't think they're ever going to get to a good place, especially after this season. This season so far for them has been a mess, okay? Kenya has been dealing with her own marital issues and Nene was allegedly suspended from the first several episodes because she put her hands on one of the crew members and left the man toothless. <laughs> and this report came from lovebscott.com. Nene did finally show up after being absent for a few episodes, and when she showed up, the drama between her and Kenya started up again. Now, first, I want to talk about the letter gate. <laughs> so, Nene wrote this private note to Cynthia, but somehow, some way, the note was leaked to a blog called lovebscott.com, and Nene tried to shift the blame on Kenya to make it seem like Kenya was the one leaking stories. Come on, come on. So you just saying stuff to be Scott, cause like how did- I'm not even a friend with B. Scott. How did your letter, no. your exact wording, how did they end up in a blog? This blog has exactly what was on the card. She sent it to the blog. Let me tell you something, the one thing that a person can tell you about Nene Lee's, I don't ever talk to bloggers. Kenya is known for leaking things to the blogs. She's calculated, she's a dirty ass girl. Whatever her intentions was for it, it didn't work, honey. 
Now the blogger B. Scott clapped back at Nene and he actually revealed that Nene's team was the one who did send him the story. So Nene was lying. <laughs> I'm gonna point the finger <laughs> and just say Nene's a liar. She is a liar. And to give it context so people can understand, me, I have known Nene for over 10 years. Nene was one of my first guests on my YouTube channel. Didn't you do it twice? I did it twice. So I'm like, don't, like, what do you, I mean, I don't, I am in friends with B. Scott. I don't know, talk to the bloggers, this, that, and the other. Okay, and let's, I'm going to get to it right now. Let's say it. Kenya did not leak the note. Mm. Cynthia did not leak the note. Portia mm. did not leak the note. Candy did not leak the note. Eva did not leak the note. You know who leaked the note? Who leaked it? Someone from Nene's team. Mm -mm -mm. And if if they want to press press me even more, I will publish those receipts. Mm. Don't play with me. Now, after the letter gate, there was another incident called the snake gate or whatever you call it. <laughs> In the snake gate incident, Nene basically said that Cynthia was talking trash about her behind her back and one of their mutual friends actually had a recording of her talking about her. What I know is that there is some sort of audio of Cynthia saying really horrible things about me. Okay, who took the recording of Cynthia? Why would I tell you that, honey? Nene wouldn't say who the friend was, but the lady speculated that it was her friend Yavana who secretly recorded Cynthia. So the housewives were thinking Yavana was the snake, but Kenya wasn't buying it. Kenya knew that there was no audio to begin with, and more than likely, Nene made this all up to make Cynthia look bad because she was tired of always being blamed for throwing shade at Cynthia. Nene, you know there is no recording. So however you want to call it, a recording, audio, bitch, you are lying. She made the entire thing up in an effort to make everyone believe that Cynthia is such a bad person. Now in this particular scene right here, Kenya and Nene almost came to blows. And honestly, this was just a buildup of tension they've had for years. Like I said before, there has been a lot of shadiness between the two of them. Both of them have spewed out some insults at each other. Nene has thrown shade at Kenya and Kenya has thrown shade at Nene. So they're now getting into more altercations because this is really a buildup of the tension between the two of them. And honestly, the root of it all is just plain ego. And also, both of them are still at odds over Cynthia. Nene lost her best friend Cynthia to Kenya, and that still bothers Nene to this day. Kenya's overall presence on Real Housewives of Atlanta definitely caused a shift because Kenya just makes great television, let's be honest. Now, even though Nene is turning a lot of people off by stirring up drama behind the scenes, I will say this, I think that she is also good TV. She's making this season very interesting and it's possible that she agreed to play the villain just to stir up some discord between the ladies because the show needs ratings. Nobody wants to see all of the housewives get along. That will get boring after a while. You need somebody to shake up the table a little bit. This is reality TV and this is how it goes. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.